What's up, guys? My name is Matt, and you're watching JNM Simulations. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to shut that off for a little bit. Uh, today, we're going to be doing a review of SS, uh, FS uh, Passengers X, which is a very popular um, add-on for FSX that basically adds uh, like a career mode to FSX, so that instead of just doing free flights, you could do like you can make like this empire of like um, this this huge airline and such. Um, so today, we're just going to be reviewing that um, add-on. It's really fun. Um, I just created a company and tried to record it, but it really, it, the fraps will not pick up the interface, the user interface of FS Passengers. So I can't really show it to you. I'll try to take some screenshots and put it in the video right here. And um, if I don't, I don't. If I do, then I do. But um, yeah, we're going to come up here and we're going to, um, we already made our company and I'll show you like the company manager and stuff like that. But basically when you start your company, you have different options. You have <coughs> career, economic, fixed failure settings and save uh, automatic save of flights basically um, the okay how do I explain this um, so basically the, the uh, career mode just says that you can only fly aircraft that you're rated to fly with and that goes with how many hours you have so that that, that is a very um, if you want to do that then go ahead and do it but I'm telling you that that I've done it before and it can be quite a hassle um just because it'll it just sometimes you know it just sometimes it just is too much um because you know at 35 hours you can fly the dc3 and then you know that that's that's you know at 35 hours you can fly the dc3 i mean not to say you know like the dc3 is big but it's not you know 35 hours you'd like to fly the dc3 or first plane um but pretty much the way this works is that you, you know, career mode and stuff, you just, oh, oops. In career mode, you will just, um, how, am I, how do I say this? You, yeah, you, you just, you just fly and then get hours for flying. Um, and so, yeah, basically we're just going to, um, do a sh short flight here and and then you know there's other ones there's economic mode which says that you have to buy planes which is what I which is what I chose um, and then there is um, what other things are there there's economic and then there's fixed failure settings which you could just set a, a failure rate of like 5% or something and FS passengers has its own f um, has its own failures so you don't have to have the default FSX failures you have your own failures on FS passengers um, which is definitely nice I hate that sound. I would go and I would turn the sound out, but that sound is just so annoying. Um, and then there's uh, the auto save, which basically says that any flight you do, regardless of whether you crash or not, it will be saved automatically. So those are pretty much the features. We're just gonna come up here and um, go into FS Passengers Flight. Select. Um, actually, we're gonna have to go into the Company Manager, buy the aircraft. You probably cannot see this. It costs two million dollars, and uh, we we just bought it. Uh, flight times 21 hours, which is just pretty much goes through the testing of the aircraft. Um, now we're going to start the flight. No parking brake, whoopsies. It's a very particular add-on. Start flight, 118 passengers, we're going to load our fuel, 44%. We don't need this much at all. Um, but basically I'm just doing two, two, two uh, things in my area. Two, uh, one, one of them is one I fly out of, these two uh, airports in the area. So we're going to be uh, flying in from these two. And I usually, you know, Destination depending on set. whether, how far I am, um, I will choose a, a, a large aircraft and just, you know, just do small, small hops like this in small airports. Um, I will post a screenshot right now of the, um, of the user interface. Um, and this is basically just showing you the, the, the payload um, and the normal flight, the manager for the aircraft that you can, you know, you can choose. And um, then there is what you'll see coming up now is the um, is the thing that, uh, and I'm, I'm just gonna have to take a picture with my phone because I can't take a screenshot actually. Sorry about that, um, but. This is just so yeah. This is just the load. What you're seeing now is just the load manager screen. You just pick what company and what pilot. And um, then what I'm going to be showing you now is where you set your type of air. Uh, you set your type of 
flight, which you can do acrobatic, normal, and sightseeing. Normal uh, sightseeing and um, acrobatic, you have to land at the same airport. And then, um, you know, normal, you don't. Um, and then lastly, there's the, the load immediately page, Check and it gives flight. you the information Check about your flight, and uh, Check also uh, the Check flight. Flaps you can up. do all these things, and it'll generate a bunch of random Check names down. for you. And you can set in your VR, one VR, V2 speeds, and the uh, co-pilot will call those out. So we're going to start the flight, and I'm going to show you um, the features of this add-on. And we're going to get the aircraft to uh, get ready to go, make sure we have... No, we didn't get the fuel in. Um, we might have to restart the flight. Let's see. Let's end the flight. Yeah, sorry about this. I have to, the problem is it's a very particular, and we have to have fuel in the aircraft before. Um, and um, sometimes it'll get a little annoyed if we don't have fuel in it. Um, and, and if and, and, and because it's a PMDG aircraft, <coughs> it won't um, it won't have the, have an exterior thing. Uh, the, uh, the fuel. Click the percentage I had. I know you probably can't see any of this. If you can, then that's fantastic. But uh, if you can't, then that's what I expect. Destination uh, set. It's just the same as what you saw before. Um, so now we're back in the cockpit. Now we're With deep fuel? in it. The fuel tanks are dry and the engines are spooling down, Captain. Now we're deep in it. How do we have no... F oh, I forgot you have to add fuel from the aircraft. <laughs> okay, so... Now that we know what we're doing and we, you know, forgot a little bit, we're going to go to menu, FS actions, fuel, and set our payload... Uh, set our fuel to one-third... It's a little much, but uh, 33% 30, actually, so that's, that's fine, that's fine. We're going to come back up here, start our flight, get everything back in there, and all the cargo. You get, uh, you can put cargo in your cargo bay, and then you get money for that too, so if you have enough fuel Destination you set. people on, then you just set, you know what I'm saying, you just uh, put, some, so put some cargo in there. So now we're going to, um, now that everything's set, we're gonna as as I'll turn it up so you can hear the crew announcements. So we're just gonna um, set the aircraft up to go, and so that we can shut off that annoying sound, so I can turn the sound back onto the aircraft. Cause I really don't want to play that. It's just gonna be annoying. You don't you know, have to talk a little bit louder because you're not gonna be able to hear. This EGT should start to rise right now. Go to the EGT. Let's get the aircraft ready to go. Something smells really good in my house. Alright, here comes the EGT and we'll be able to turn the APU in a second. <coughs> turn on your damper. I don't know, I have no idea what this is. What that's supposed to be. And APU is ready. To the brace position, which is executed by placing your head between your knees with your hands working. over your head. We would also like to remind you that all electronic devices in. should be turned off for takeoff and that mobile phones must not be used mm -hmm. for the duration of the flight. We thank you for your attention during this brief presentation. Start them rather shortly after each other. Until N2 gets to 20%. We'll fire that one. Right, there we go. <coughs> EGT rising. Um, yeah. Put the RTO set up. Usually this is a lot, you know, when I do these flights, they're a lot less, uh, they're a lot more laid back than usual. Because I don't really, you know, it's just like, you know, yeah, I mean, I, you guys know what I'm saying, it's just like, you know, you know, really, when these short ones, you know, obviously if I do long ones, if I do like longer ones from like a, like a real long haul on FS passengers, like if I'm doing like a, um, 
virtual airline flight. Um, then yeah, I'll be a little more serious. But yeah, it's just a relaxed flight. It's gonna be all hand flown. It's gonna be a static takeoff, which means that we're just gonna hold the brakes, and turn power all the way, and then go because we're on a really like 4,000 foot runway. Um, done this before. I've actually done it in 707, and it's unrealistic, but it's fun to do. And we're gonna be going into a pretty short runway too. It's not as short as this one, but. 8,000 feet, so it would be fine, but now we're going to start the right one. We got it. Now we know what we're doing. I accidentally left the isolation valve closed, <clears throat> but now it's open and we're ready to start number two. Uh, and uh, FS Message has a lot of um, cool things about it. Uh, I just actually uh, just opened up the panel, which, uh, panel, which I don't know if you can see. Um, but um, here we've got that on this. I don't know if you can see this right here, but it's uh, just basically all the controls of the pilot. Um, we're going to put on music. Then we can uh, put on a movie. We can put uh, we can give out food, hot food, uh, drink, and turn on the seatbelts. Uh, seatbelts are actually uh, auto on these flights when you have bigger planes. Um, bigger planes, it's auto, um, and they don't let us do it. But it's still fun to fly. It's not a big deal. But anyway, we're just gonna. Uh, Rotated about 145 knots because we're going to go uh, short field takeoff, which will be full flaps. It's not normal in a 737, but we have to get off the ground quite quickly. So at 140 knots, full flaps will uh, take to the skies because we're going to need uh, more lift before we're going to get that from those flaps. So, we'll then get it started. We'll do a static takeoff here um, and uh, we'll get going. As we 
we're uh, reaching flaps of attraction speed, we'll just get that in. And um, now we're going to start to uh, reach up for about 6,000 feet. Um, and then we'll uh, let it all up there. It's a very powerful aircraft. But that's how we're reviewing. Uh, we're actually reviewing the uh, passengers. I kind of forgot that. But, um, yeah, so basically in FS passengers, you have the option to... Uh, you know, give food and such, and you know, all this. The thing is, you have when, when you're doing this, you're doing it not only as your uh, as a pilot, but you're doing it as a um, as the, as the manager of the airline. So you have to make decisions for the airline and stuff. Like when purchasing an aircraft and stuff like that. And you know, what aircraft, like, um, you know, they might be old. You know, like I, I just purchased one of them, my real one, the one that's not this one, I just purchased a 707. It was really old when I got it for quite cheap. I got it for, you know, something like that. Forty million dollars, which is not that bad for the plane, considering that this one costs about fifty. Um, again, so in the game, you really you sacrifice, you know, you know, new like age for just people, like amount of people you can carry. You sacrifice, uh, you know, speed for people you can carry. Um, you know, I know, like, I'm pretty sure every single airplane you can fly is available here. Like. Um, and you get you get more money based on like so you get the most money off of like long range flights you get. Um, and what they do with this is just shut it off. I don't know why it's why that's like, um, a trap. Um but Consequences and stuff. But if you like, if you over go over the, uh, it makes you a better pilot. If you go over the uh, flap down speed, um, you your actually your airplane will actually break, um, and then you'll be forced to land, and you'll either have to record the flight or not record the flight. And uh, you know, usually if you've been doing a long flight and you do that, I've done that many times where I've been flying for two hours and I break the flaps and I just really record the flight and waste two hours of my life. Um, so I'm gonna be you know wary of when you're doing this that you have to do.
So the vertical speed was ridiculous, but that was because we were slipping the air. It wouldn't have been a couple of for a passenger. Uh, but one thousand. So terrain, uh, terrain. That's pretty much like how it goes. Uh, and there's many things that you can do with this that will get you. Uh, Approaching minimums. Minimums. Terrain. Terrain. One hundred. Fifty. Fifty. Thirty. Thirty. Twenty. Twenty. Ten. Ten. So, now that we're uh, deboarding, we have 4 minutes and 30 seconds left, um, so basically it's really, you know, it's realistic, um, you know, I could definitely, this would make, you know, I fly Batson, so this and Batson would make, like, a real, real life experience, um, but, yeah, you know, so it's a lot of fun to do, I definitely recommend it, um, and it's, you know, it's realistic, it's not, you know, and there is, there are, like, there's failure, not, and there's sometimes there's not failures, but there's, situations where they'll be like, oh, there's a passenger in the back who's uh, sick. They'll be like, well, we have to get an emergency because there's a passenger sick. Um, there's, a little, there's a little stuff like that, you know, like something like really, you know, shows like, I guess it's real life. Um, and I definitely think it's worth it. So if I had to give it a number, I'd give it a 9 out of 10 or something. Because there are some flaws with it. Um, there are some problems. Just like any add on ever for all problems with it, but um, I would never hold them against it. But it's just, you know, problems like with me, like where I might, you know, fly, you know, be, be going a little bit over the approach, like, or a little bit over the flat speed, like if you, like, you don't give you penalties for breaking in five knots. And also, like, the, the time, if your flight's you a, uh, shorter than 15 minutes, uh, then it won't work. So if this is shorter than 15 minutes, then it'll be like, well, it's shorter than 15 minutes, so we can't give you money for it. I'm like, well, um, this can get annoying. So sometimes I just like to convert myself and do a little spin, or not spin, but a uh, uh, circle in the air. 
Also, the sounds of this add on are really realistic. A lot of fun. Um, and overall, just it improves your simulation experience. Um, so I definitely say, you know, get it. Um, it will add a lot of a lot more hours to your simulation experience. Because rather rather than you know, like I said, um, rather than you, you know. Rather than you sitting there just flying regularly, you would sit here flying, you know, a, a passenger jet. So it's you know it's it's a lot more you know resonant, uh, a lot more it's a lot more relevant to my life because I want to be a pilot when I'm older, uh, a airline pilot when I'm older. So you know this will uh, you know like like I said this will accomplish that goal. So if you really you know if you want to um, if you want that experience, I guess I say go ahead and do it. And I, you know, I definitely think you should get the aircraft because it's, um, you know, well, not the aircraft, sorry, the add-on. TCAS test. Pass. It's a lot of fun to do, especially because, you know, do these, doing these turnovers. Um, so instead of doing, like, a, 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 a VA flight, virtual airline flight, instead of, like, doing all this stuff for the routing and stuff, you just come here. As people are deboarding, you just put in your new route, go back into it, start a new flight. And you're, you're off. You know the, the interface doesn't take a long time. It doesn't really take you away from your immersion. So it's really, you know, it's realistic and it's a lot of fun to do. So I definitely say uh, get the uh, get the add-on. It doesn't cost that much money, and it'll be the hours of fun. It'll really make your simulation experience. Um, like I've been saying, it'll make your simulation uh, go further. It's actually like 20 bucks or however much it costs now. I don't remember. Um, It'll make your simulation experience last that much longer. You know, maybe like another, a whole another year. You know, because you don't have to. Uh, you're not going to be sitting here doing you know, dumb, boring stuff. You here. Know, especially like doing the um, acrobatic flights. Those are quite fun. Stuff like that. It'll just make you want to play it longer than you actually, you know, might play it normally. Yeah. So that's really you know, the positive thing about it. That you know, it, it, it'll make your make you play for another year. You know, hundreds more hours when you would just be like, well, I, I'm done with free flight. I don't want to really do that anymore. It's really, this really changes the aircraft. Uh, the, um, the, the simulation it makes it more like an aircraft airline simulation rather than an aircraft simulation. Welcome, born. Um, and like, system simulations and stuff. So basically, that's all. Um, I appreciate you guys watching it. I'm just gonna take another picture of this. Uh, now, now you have to go on an end flight. And you get the uh, the thing. And obviously, like I said, this one was too short. Um, and you know that that's that's fine. Um, and you know it does penalize you for some stuff. Like um, I'll show you this. It, it penalized me for one uh, using the reverse thrusters under 60 knots. And I did that because it was uh, we were quite we were quite uh, we, were, we had not that much room left, and I just wanted to use it. Um, and you know that's my fault. I understand that. And then pushing the engines. Um, to max power with parking brakes, they said is not a good idea. Um, but, you know, and like I did that because we didn't have much uh, space to take off. But, uh, you know, kiss the runway, 133 feet per minute. Um, and then the flight was too short. So it was about, um, what was it? It was, a, it was uh, nine minutes, which is, you know, they want 15 minutes. But I'll show you the financial report as well, um, just so you get an idea of how much money you can, how much money uh, you make from it. And you can see it says, you know, our disappointment because the flight was too short. But that's pretty much all. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I'm going to cancel that flight because I don't really want that there. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this rather than, you know, rather than uh, in uh, aircraft review, this add-on review. Uh, and let us, let us know if you want to see more of this because, you know, definitely willing to, to do this because it's uh, you know, a different way to um, do things. And we definitely think it's a, it's a, it'll be a cool thing to do. Because, you know, we want to get applied to most people as possible. So, you know, definitely willing to do it. Um, so, just let us know if you want to see more of this. Um, thanks for watching.